I'm Joanne Pollock with Inside My Studio Art Series, and I'm here today with Kyle and Amanda in their uh, studio space in Collingwood. So, hi guys, good to see you both. Um, wealth, wealth artists that now have uh, fled wealth for bigger and better things. So, thank you for meeting with uh, with me today to talk about your uh, successful art practice in Collingwood. Um, so what are you guys up to right at the moment in terms of your your process or your genre or whatever? Um, well, yeah, thanks Joanne for having us and um, we um, We're just currently kind of uh, working on a body of work in the studio um, um, That is uh, reflective of, of uh, sort of the times that we're in and sort of having that time to sort of contemplate and, and reflect on on our environment and um, our uh, the spaces that we we are um, kind of inhabiting um, we um, are kind of currently working on uh, pieces that uh, focus on uh, transition and in different urban spaces um, the uh, connection from the old to the new and that sort of transitional uh, time uh, in between. Um, and yeah, we are new to this area, Collingwood. Um, so we've had some time to sort of, um, uh, yeah, just sort of re reevaluate and re sort of connect with um, our new environment and Sort of what that means, um, and having some time to to sort of uh, reflect on on um, what that means and what that will sort of translate into uh, on on the canvas. So, so Amanda Collingwood is a different animal than well, <clears throat> and um, although you're still sort of refining your process and thinking through where you're where you're going to go. Um, the environment here is quite different, and of course, that the environment here is going to influence, I would guess, where you're going in the future. So, uh, any ideas on what that may look like? Great question. Um, I think that with any environment we're in, um, we were talking earlier that we did a lot of traveling. That it's really just paying attention and noticing. So, for here, it's. Uh, looking to see what the landscape tells us and that's what we're translating onto the canvas so looking at the history of this the place the connection with the people and really you know documenting those changes so you know those sites and transition and right now and especially this year i think our landscape is very different and <laughs> that's whether we are in collingwood guelph or globally you know all of our landscapes are different so as artists it's taking that and you know reflecting on it and commenting to our own abilities um, how we do that on the canvas so I think um, every artist's work is going to be influenced um, because of the changing landscape for everyone and yeah I think that's especially true for the work that we're doing between old and new sites and landscapes and transition and you know how we communicate that on the panel together. <clears throat> As a husband and wife team who have to work together, uh, it, I don't know that many husband and wife teams that um, that can work together. Do you share a common vision most times? Do you do you do your work together? Do you do your work separately? Uh, does somebody have the final say over what <laughs> ends up? Uh, how does it all work? Um, yeah, I think that's a question that we often get and, um, you know, we have people kind of <laughs> laughing and trying to picture what this actually looks like uh, in the studio, but um, I, think, um, I think having a common sort of vision uh, is what's helpful for us to be able to collaborate. Um, I think that you can't really collaborate with somebody that has a completely different vision, so um, well, you can, but with a lot of difficulty. Well, absolutely, you can. That's, that's true. Um, but I think that it's helpful for us in our process that we are, are on, regardless of our uh, sort of different style and approach to the canvas, we 
the, there's a collective sort of cohesiveness to our process and, and the, colla the collaboration. Um, we, there's no uh, set sort of um, role, so um, we are both um, involved throughout the process from start to finish. Um, and I think that um, it's, it's um, stepping uh, to the canvas and having, you know, uh, working and then having the other sort of step in. Or um, often it's helpful to have that fresh set of eyes to, to often say, you know, you need to stop, stop what you're doing because as an artist that can be hard yeah. when you're in, you know, uh, creating and, and kind of, and it's not until you step away and then step back that you realize that you maybe took this too far or you maybe you should have yeah, taken mm -hmm. this in a different direction. So it's helpful to have two sets of eyes um, um, through the process. Um, and then we, we definitely, a piece isn't really completed until we're both on yeah. the same sort of page. That That's our one rule, yeah. is that a piece will never be shown or put up that we both don't agree is finished. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So that's, and with, you know, with doing it for this long together, um, we really just trust the process. So even though a piece might get to a point where, you know, I call it the burn phase, where you just want to burn the piece because you're so <laughs> angry at it, um, <laughs> we trust the pro our process of working through that piece and, and together that I trust what he was going to do with the piece, he trusts me, and mm -hmm. so we just keep working through those layers, which is why we have so many layers on our paintings, um, where we get it to a point where we, we both agree that the piece feels complete. Has it always been like that? Um, collabor collaboration mm -hmm. or, um, yeah, no, we, I mean, in the beginning of our sort of our careers, we had separate styles and worked separately. Um, and we, mind you, we were always commenting and, uh, you know, talking about our, each other's work, you know, quite closely. So it was kind of a natural progression to, uh, to try a collaborative piece. So, um, we attempted a piece where we were both sort of working on it enjoyed that process and how, um, you know, uh, how that process sort of uh, took shape um, and then um, sort of continued on as a collaboration and really we've been working as a sole collaboration for a number of years. So um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been a neat sort of journey and, and you know, uh, sort of process to get to where we are. Good uh, for you. Um, so you guys have a busy life. You have three kids, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know that you have had some um, interesting experiences <laughs> in your travels, and uh, I can think of your experiences in Venice in particular. Was it Venice or Florence? One of those places where yeah. <laughs> um, it was a bit of an interesting, with fleas. Wasn't it about Ticks. fleas? Yeah, Ticks. it was. It was a it was in a small town in uh, sort of Tuscan area. Luca is the name. Luca. And funny enough, our our third child, our youngest, <laughs> is named Luca because the city. we oh. had we had visited this specific city uh, in two thousand three. Amanda, mm -hmm. the two of us, uh, and we returned with our kids to sort of show them the spot that you know we had named our our, our youngest after. Um, beautiful apartment, but yeah, we had some some issues with some uh, ticks, and there's a whole kind of you know uh, new you know getting rid of stuff. And anyway, we were it, it was it was part of the adventure, and we can thankfully look back on it now with you know uh, a, a different lens. <laughs> and, Looking in the rear view um, mirror yeah. is always better. <laughs> yeah, and I think that that's important to <laughs> just you know to tr try to do. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was a fantastic opportunity and and time for us to um, yeah travel and uh, see some of those spots with our with our children uh, mm -hmm. and it's moments that we'll always have and, and they will as well. So did 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 those experiences um, overseas influence your work in any way that you can think of? Yeah. I think absolutely. Um, 
I mean, definitely color, texture, um, the appreciation of old and new, and really just those those sites and transition and how you know people really influence a, a city or a country. And so really, um, I think that we bring a lot of those elements back into our work by, especially with color and texture, because it's that is so rich and beautiful over there and you know sites we saw, we were able to see and connect with um we really want to pull those elements back in um to work that we're doing so i think definitely at yeah. least for me yeah for and, sure. I, and i think too being sort of uh having the time to sort of sit in some of those spaces and really sort of be immersed in in those the, the senses of you know mm -hmm. um, whether it you know you're just sitting on the you know on the corner and sitting next to a, an, old, an old building and you know the light and different colors and sounds so I think also being uh, um, sort of not creating and just being in the moment and present and really sort of absorbing those uh, the mm -hmm. sort of that sensual sort of part of, of, of the surrounding um, definitely allowed us to sort of um, absorb that and, and take that, um, you know, and then be able to sort of transfer that into, or when we're in the studio now. So. And that's also, I think, part of how we want the work to be perceived. I mean, every viewer is going to look at a work differently, of course, and it's their own experience, but it is creating that experience with the work so that you kind of you get lost in those layers and you are paying attention to your senses or there's maybe something that sparks a memory or you know um you know a connection with a, a place or a space or so really trying to pull on those elements of you know um that you're speaking to those your senses and and, and experience and feeling so wanting to kind of evoke those through the through our panels for sure yeah, because <clears throat> I was going to ask you the question about what you want your viewers to take from your work, but you know, you've kind of answered that. Mm -hmm. um, but how would you describe your style? Um, it's, it, is, it is not exactly abstract. It is not exactly uh, semi-abstract, yeah, or perhaps you categorize it that way. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't have a particular moniker that I can hang mm -hmm. on your work that mm -hmm. I can think of. How do you guys describe it? I think it would essentially it's it's um, representational with with uh, space of abstraction. So there's um, we kind of are interested with that ability of um, being able to stand in front of a piece of work, have recognizable sort of elements that you can kind of make like those that. connections mm -hmm. with. Um, but then have a space where you can um, sort of your uh, experience is uh, able to sort of penetrate the, the work as well um, as it's opposed like to push pull of yeah the piece drawing you in and pushing you back and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. yeah so I think it's it's kind of a, a mix of both um, and, and is that part of the appeal then do you think? I think so, and I think that um, I think because of the nature of our process, and because there are two different artists working on one piece, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of two perspectives of a space on uh, on one canvas. Or um, so it's um, there's elements of both of us and both of our um, our experience within the space, or or. Um, in, in response of the space um, that come together to create one sort of cohesive piece. Mm -hmm. um, and it is that, you know, it often gets described as mixed media and, right. you know, um, mixed for us, mixed and co-creation because it's yeah. just that, you know, combination of all those elements, which, and we speak a lot um, to that being, you know, credit to the, <laughs> to the university because um, that program is so great at introducing us to many different styles yeah. of art, and so we really got to kind of play and explore in those spaces mm -hmm. and take those elements to really inform our work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's a pleasure to talk to you guys today, and um, I I know that Guelph will be happy to see you again. <laughs>
and uh, for people that want to visit your you, do you have a studio? Do you have a space right now where people can come and purchase your work, or how are you working to sell your work? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, <laughs> pre-COVID, yes, you could definitely come see us. Uh, right now, it's um, you know we're doing all of our sales online, and right. um, so Instagram, a way to connect with us, our website, our email. Um, definitely um, how we're connecting with our clients and, and friends so um, and then eventually you know we'll, we'll open space back up but so they can find you under Kiam K-I-A-M yep yeah right. um, info at Kiam studio K-I-A-M studio dot com okay and same website Kiam studio dot com yeah. and the handle Instagram at Kayam Studio. <laughs> okay, and forgive me because I can never pronounce your last name correctly. Well, it's a high, it's a long story, but uh, it's <laughs> Wilson Chiochi. Uh, Chiochi. Yeah. Okay, there you go. So thank you. Great to see both of you guys, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing what actually does become produced in the next coming months.